Hello everybody, this is Michael from Michael Simber Studios, your new art school in Elmhurst. Um, I'm here today to teach you how to draw Wilbur. Uh, even though I'm not sure he's the star of Charlotte's Web, I thought it was Charlotte, but let's draw Wilbur. Um, I'm going to kind of teach you how to sketch him over here. Um, before we do marker or painting, I like to get um, the main shapes of him, so I'll kind of take you through a little bit. Right away, I kind of notice his whole head sort of a pear shape. So maybe if you draw with me a little bit, and you can always erase and change things later, but I can see his forehead coming down here and his cheek all the way down to his chin and then over the top I'm gonna go right through that ear and over here to his other side of his jaw so you can kind of see it's almost like up here or a little bit like Olaf from Frozen 2 your favorite and if you get some extra lines just take them out now the nice thing about Wilbur on this drawing is this ear has some really cool overlapping so it looks like this ear is really far away so I'm just gonna find a spot up here on his head and I'm gonna start sketching up And I like sketching. It gives your brain a little more time to think instead of just drawing so quickly. Sometimes your hand thinks it has a brain of its own, but you have to give it time to get up there so you can figure out what you want to make. And then, here's the pink part of his ear. And this is where that really cool overlapping comes in from the inside of his ear. So that's kind of interesting right there. And you can even move this a little bit. I feel like I might want to make that a little bigger. And on the other side, this is what I love about this side. I'm actually going to find a spot right up here on his head. And I'm going to erase this. Because it makes it look like this ear is so much closer to me than that ear but it's very much the same. It's almost like a big rabbit ear. Up, down. We have a chihuahua, so it also looks like my chihuahua's ear. Who knew? And then you can see that really cool overlapping again. Down, back into his head. Then this almost looks like fur on the inside of his ear, curls back up. So already, I love how that ear looks a little farther away. I think I could do a little better if I sketch a little more. And I notice that his neck comes right out of that ear right there. So right next to my jaw, I think I'm just going to go ahead and downhill. And if it's a little bit different than this picture, that's totally fine. Because you're all different artists and you'll have your own way of drawing Wilbur. And right now I'm just looking for where his neck comes out the bottom. Right now he still has no face. Then, instead of the nose being right in the center over here, he's looking a little bit over here to the left. So I noticed right when I looked at this picture, this looks like a heart upside down. So I'm going to find a spot very close to his cheek over here. And I'm just going to start that heart. And comes over here. And it comes down. And I noticed that this artist uses this overlapping technique quite a bit. Whenever lines overlap, makes them look behind other things so I like to use that now he looks like a dog not for long let's make this first line of the nose come down and you can see there's three 
they almost look like hills going back in the landscape. Another wrinkle on his nose. And if they're not perfect, don't worry, it's your Wilbur. And this one right here. And then I call this the Mickey Mouse eye trick. On Disney movies, you'll see a lot of characters that have a line with the eye coming up out of it. So right on Wilbur's nose, he has this little window shaped eye. And again, you can change him a little bit. And he's looking upwards, so his blue eyeball goes that way. And then sometimes it's hard to find where this eye goes. It's really hard to get them the same. So I might even lay my pencil across and see, oh, it's a little bit higher than that eye. So I might lay my pencil across and find that little cheek, maybe right here. And again, you're an artist, not a computer. So if it's not exactly the same, that's totally okay. Oh, mine looks a little sad. Hopefully I can perk them up a little. And there's a little wrinkle or eyelid right there. Makes them look so endearing. And the eyebrows, wow, look at them. They're way up here. Why does my Wilbur look so worried? Here's another one. This one's touching the side of this head. And you can color those in with your pencil, but we might even do some outlining later. So far, so good. And here's that outlining trick or that overlapping trick again on his nostril. It's almost the same shape as his eye. And another overlapping, almost a raindrop shape. I'm going to move this one over a little bit. So if you want to change your mind, that's why I use pencil first. Wow, I'm having a nostril problem here. Clean off my paper a little. And I noticed that his mouth is right under his nose. It's not way down here. If you wanted to make him sad, you might put it way down here. But I noticed that it comes out. It almost looks like a dolphin swimming with a tail at the top. So it's going to go down up to his other nostril, down, and then way up here to smile. And then this artist uses that overlapping trick again. That looks much better. Now my Wilbur looks happier. The other side. And this looks like it's the bottom of his chin. So again, to find where that is, I notice that the mouth starts a little bit, and then it's maybe right there and comes down to his chin. That looks pretty good. I don't know what the rest of his body looks like. And I even know, notice there's some background right where his ear meets his neck. I might want to sketch that fence in there. I can even see the top edge of that fence and down a little ways. And you can decide how much background you'd like to put. Most of the story takes place on a farm, so we definitely know that there's gonna be more fences and a barnyard back there. And I will even look where the fence comes out on this side, a little bit up his ear. There's the other side of the fence. But all of you know what a farm looks like, so you might even want to change this scene. When you read the book, you'll get a lot of images in your head, and this is from the movie, the animated movie. And there you go. You can clean off your paper a little bit. Not bad. But I think I would try it a little bit more. I might make some changes just to practice. It's only my second try. And then I have the Sharpie marker or any black marker might help. You can see before you use paint or another marker, you might want to overlap some of this. 
sometimes it's a little bit hard to see pencil through color. And I always move my marker very slowly. Some people get a marker, something happens to their brain, they start scribbling. But markers need time for the ink to really soak into the paper and make a nice dark line. And I won't do the whole picture. I'll just give you a little bit of an idea of how to do that. You can see it coming out with much more contrast already. And it's really starting to look like a cartoon that I've seen before. If you want to change things, you can see how my pencil is still showing. But when you're finished, you can erase all your pencil, but your marker stays. Ta-da! And now, my lovely assistant, Ms. Koshuk, has already finished a painted version. Look at this. It's way better than mine. She's a genius. So take your time and really do a great sketch. Outline it. Make it look just how you want it. And then you can spend a lot of time painting, coloring. We have Mr. Sketch Markers over here because they smell like orange and blueberry. But you can use anything you want to. I hope you have a fun time drawing Wilbur. Don't forget about Charlotte.